that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted us the time and the, the ability so we can talk more about the topic that we shared today with you, alhamdulillah. And actually, we were, we were talking about something very important. We were talking about the lessons that we can extract from the chapter of the people of the cave known as Surah al -Kah. And alhamdulillah, we were, we were concentrating in uh, one concept, but, but you know what? I, I wanted to make this session different because I wanted the participation from uh, my brothers and sisters, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. So uh, did you attend the khutbah today? If you attend, just raise your hand. Hey, MashaAllah. MashaAllah, most of the people, alhamdulillah. So those who raise their hands, and Dr. Yusuf, okay, those who raise their hands, they will answer, okay? So we were concentrating today on the chapter. So what's the number of the chapter? 18. Who said 18? Okay, Hajwajdi. Okay, gets one point, okay? Okay, one point. See, see is who's going to win at the end. Okay, and we were talking about that the people of the cave were in that period between two prophets. What's the name of the prophet? Yes, they were in the time of the prophet Muhammad and, and Sayyidina Isa. Okay, that's the point for brother Hamza. Okay. <laughs> okay, so one point. Okay, and we mentioned also there's something happened that that some of the narration said what, who, what what's the name of the king huh knows we mentioned that name today in the khutbah so that means i did i did bad okay because it, it is not clear enough yes it's not clear enough i have to say it twice okay so that's my fault i lose one point okay that's how to be fair Okay, another point also I want to share. We said that we will concentrate today on one lesson. Which, which lesson? To eat halal. That's a good point, mashallah. So here is another point to our brother, mashallah. Brother Rizwan. Okay, what else? We said we will sac like focus on, on point. What? Sacrificing. That's, the, that's the, the word that we used, sacrificing. Those young men, and, and pay attention to something. They weren't messengers. They weren't prophets. Even the Quran did not say that they were relatives of prophets. They weren't a family. Like if that happened with Sayyida Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you could understand this. But Allah had made miracles to happen just because of young men. But if you was a good believer, Allah could change things for you. That it is impossible. Allah could make it possible for you, right? Because he did with those people, the young men. And also one of the things that we mentioned today, that the sacrifice they made, it was so significant and it was so important to the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved their bodies for how long? MashaAllah, how many points we could, we could distribute? Okay, our brother Islam, brother Muhammad, and uh, uh, our brother Abdul Basit. And our brother, mashallah, also. Yes. Yeah, our brother, our brother, Rashad. No, you need points. Okay, brother Hamza said, so he has two points now. Who's going to win tonight? <laughs> okay. So they stayed 309 years. But... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made something. If you, you know, if you, if you slept for one day, would you wake up and remember what happened like two days ago, three days ago? It, it, perhaps, you know, you would have empty memory. One day, 24 hours. But uh, they slept for 309 years and they woke up on that status. They still remember their conflict their problem with the tyrant ruler. 
what that tells you between the lines that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to have, he will want your memory to keep it. It only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another issue that there were few of them. How many exactly their number? Do we have exact number? No. So all the masjid take one point, mashallah. One point each. But what's the maximum number that reached in the Quran? Huh? Seven. Yes, Dr. Zaki, mashallah. mashallah. So he has two points now. As well as the two points now, mashallah. Seven and the, the eighth is the dog. Okay? Where was the position of the dog? In front of the cave, mashallah. Ismail is here also. He entered to the competition. I like that, Ismail. Mashallah. So he was in the mouth of the cave. And listen, but Allah mentioned the dog. You might ask, Imam, like Allah should con concentrate on them, not the dog. So why Allah mentioned the dog? The scholar said the dog itself got honored because it was in the company of the righteous people. What is the message for us? That if you, even if you disobeyed Allah, even if you had some wrong issues, you might be honored and blessed because you are in the company of the righteous people. If Allah honored the dog, definitely he will honor you. You got the lesson now? See? And, and let's go to the other point. We have in the Quran that Allah had mentioned some of the animals. Could you mention some of them? Elephant. So if you if if I pointed at you, give yourself one point, okay? Okay. Bakara, the cow, the birds. Well, which bird? The hopeful bird, mashallah. Who said brother Rashid? Mashallah is there. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. That's great. The camel. Did Allah mention the camel? Yes, exactly. Yes, mashallah. Huh? Ants, Allahu Akbar. Huh? Monkeys, Allahu Akbar. Bees. The dog, we mentioned the namely the ants. Huh? The, the pigs, yes. And fish. The whale, camel. Huh? Yes, goats, sheep, exactly. Huh? Snakes. Exactly, Allahu Akbar, you see? MashaAllah, I told you, you guys who became scholars, MashaAllah. I should announce that on Facebook. The community of New Purichi became scholars. That's a certificate. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you. I have, I have a brother here also on Zoom, his brother Fazl, MashaAllah, alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi So, what's the significance of mention? And, and by the way, some of the scholars said all those animals that Allah had mentioned in the Quran, they will be with us in Jannah. So you see them because now you ask Imam, the dog of the people of the cave, you will see him in Jannah. You will see that dog in Jannah. Allah will bring them so you can visualize, you can see them by yourself in Jannah. And one of the things, that I wanted you to understand when we talk about the animals. Allah had highlighted some of the surahs named after the, the animals so we can understand that Allah himself showed his mercy to the animals. So we, should, we, we, we must show our mercy to the animals too. And, and you know the idea of the worship. The, the last part of the khutbah, I mentioned something very important related to the meaning of the worship. I, I should ask, I don't want to, to, to choose some of the names. If Dr. Rahim wasn't praying, I would ask him, you know, but what is 
the true meaning of worship. What is worship? Huh? See? What? Good things. Exactly. And that is what Dr. Zaki and Brother Muhammad said. Listen, I will say, I will say the definition, the, the academic definition in Arabic, then I will translate it. Al-ibadah هِيَ كُلُّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَيَرْضَاهُ مِنَ الْأَقْوَالِ وَالْأَفْعَالِ الظَّاهِرَ وَالْبَاطِنِ Seems like long, long definition, right? Everything would please Allah, whether it is a statement or an action, whether it is inner side, inside you or outside you. That means if you listening right now, sitting right now in the masjid, watching me, listening to the lecture, paying attention, that's part of worship, right? If you smiled to your brother in Islam, that's an action of worship. And you know what, right now, right while you are sitting, if you said to yourself, you know what, I, I like this Imam. Inshallah, while I'm praying Sunnah, I will make dua for him in my sujood. You just intended, you will be rewarded for the good intention. What's my evidence? The hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he said, if you intended to do something good, you will be rewarded. And if you did it, you will be rewarded multiplied by 10. Listen to the opposite. If you intended something bad, you will not be punished. Unless you do it. And if you did it, you will take one bad deed. And Allah will forgive if you, you know, went back to Allah. If you did istighfar, Allah will forgive. See how much Allah is is Kareem, he is the most generous, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that will take us to the main concept of the worship. Let me, let me make it clear, especially for the sisters. One day, a woman came to Rasulullah and I know, I know you guys waiting for the dinner, so I will try to make it quick, okay? Half hour more, is that good? See, Brother Faisal, oh, Muhammad said no, you see? I have to obey my son. <laughs> 10 more hours, you see, that's for his dad. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so listen, if I told you, a woman came to Rasulullah and she said, Ya Rasulullah, you have the men, the brothers, always with you in the masjid. They are listening to the lectures. They attending jama'a. They pray with you, next to you. They can sit next to you. They attend lectures with you. And they go for fighting in the battlefield with you. And we are in our houses. So how come they take all these rewards and we are in our houses? Listen, our sisters in the back. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, If you did well to your husband, if you was a good wife, you will get the reward that is equivalent to all of that. You got now? So he didn't say if you prayed 100 Raka'az per day, you will get all of that. No. He said, if you was a good wife in your house, you will get that much reward, which is equivalent to all of that. Can you imagine the reward, which is equivalent to pray with Rasulullah? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's, that's amazing. So what's the true meaning of the worship? Everything that you do, when you even help somebody carrying a bag, when you give a spoon to your brother in the masjid, if you intended to respond with a bag, 
that word and you swallowed it and you decided to replace it. When you swallow, you will be rewarded. If you replaced it with a good word, you will be rewarded, rewarded also. That's, that is the greatness of our Islam. When you go to your work, when you spend on your family, when you be good to your wife, you know, even the little things that we consider it as the etiquette nowadays, when you get the fork and, and give your, your wife a piece of food by yourself. You know, Rasulullah 14 centuries ago said that is an act of worship. When you feed your wife by yourself, that is an act of worship. I want to take the meaning of the worship out of the little zone, the small zone that we took it because this concept, it's not Islamic at all. You know, other religions, they consider religion only in the church. Outside the church, do whatever you want. In Islam, we do not have that concept. Islam and religion is everywhere. Let me surprise you. Let me surprise you. And I believe, alhamdulillah, that I will just, you know, remind you. You know, when you sleep, when you sleep, that time of sleeping, it could be for the worship of Allah. Even sleeping, yes. Because when you sleep and you pray just the Isha in a congregation, alhamdulillah, and when you sleep, so you have the intention, I ask Allah to grant me another day so I will be better Muslim. You know what is happening? You will be rewarded and you will get the blessings and the rewards exactly as if you prayed half of the night, Qiyamul Layl. Half of the night, it will be rewarded as if you prayed for Allah, half of the night. Then when you wake up, come to the masjid to pray Fajr, you will be rewarded as if you prayed the entire night for, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I am resting and, and the angels are writing good deeds. Allah loves to reward you. Allah loves to grant you jannah. Allah wants from you to repent to him. This is the meaning of the worship. May Allah grant us jannah. Allahumma amin. Jazakumullah khayran. Barakallahu feekum. And I want to see who was getting the, the, the most points. Brother Hamza, how many points you got? Three? Three. Brother Mutia, how many points? One? Hajwazli. Uh, Two? Dr. Zaki. Uh, zero. That, that's, that's a good one. Yes, mashallah. Uh, three. Uh, who else? Brother, huh? Brother Rashad, one, Allahu Akbar, Ismail, Muhammad, two, Allahu Akbar. So, Brother Hamza, Muhammad Ali, Hajj Wazdi, MashaAllah, who else? Brother Muhammad, Brother Islam, how many? One, Brother Muhammad. <laughs> no food from them, okay. We got one, right? Brother Abdul Basit got one. Dr. Rahim, so how many points you give to Dr. Rahim? Huh? Give him all. Yes, you see? Kareem, you got one? MashaAllah. Allahu Akbar, that's great. MashaAllah. You know, you know, I, I was thinking because Dr. Rahim came late. I remembered the line in the poem. It says, وَفِي اللَّيْلَةِ الظَّلْمَاءُ يُفْتَقَدُ الْبَدْرُ you know what does it mean? In the most dark night, you, you stare at the sky looking for the moon. So when he came late, I was staring at the message looking for, for him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alamin. Zakumullah khayran. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum. Lima fihi min ayatin wa dhikrin hakeem. Wa sallillahumma wa sallim wa barik.
على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته